This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by IBM. Big data at the speed of business. Welcome to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and thank you for joining me for another two hours of Straight Talk Radio. I want to welcome members of our armed forces and veterans who are joining us from remote locations around the world. Thank you for your service and for being with us again. My guest today is former United States Senator from North Carolina who served under Presidents Johnson, Nixon, Reagan, and Bush, Miss Elizabeth Dole. In just a moment, we're going to be speaking to her about one of the most important and often neglected neglected aspects of American foreign policy, and that is how we can and must support returning soldiers and those who become their caregivers. But before Ms. Dole joins us, as is my custom every week, let me tell you a little about her background. Mary Elizabeth Alexander Hanford was born in Salisbury, North Carolina. Dole earned her undergraduate degree in political science from Duke University. She earned her graduate degree in education and law from Harvard University. Dole's first foray into politics came when she landed a job in the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. By 1968, she was working in consumer affairs in the Johnson administration, and five short years later, she was appointed by Nixon to the Federal Trade Commission. In 1983, Dole was appointed U.S. Secretary of Transportation by President Reagan, and she subsequently served as Secretary of Labor in the Bush administration. In late 1990, Ms. Dole resigned to accept the position of President of the American Red Cross. After serving the Red Cross for almost a decade, Dole threw her hat in the ring for the Republican nomination for presidency. But once she saw the party coalescing around George Bush, she graciously withdrew, and for a period of time, it looked like Elizabeth Dole might be retiring. But on the heels of Jesse Helms' retirement, she ran for the Senate seat and emerged victorious. She served the U.S. Senate from 2003 to 2009. Today, Ms. Dole continues to work in public service. And in just a moment, we're going to hear more about a mission that is near and dear to her heart. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Costa Report, a leader that is admired from both sides of the aisle for her smarts, class, and compassion, Miss Elizabeth Dole. Thank you for joining us, Miss Dole. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And if I'm going to say Rebecca, you must say Elizabeth, okay? <laughs> oh, you're very gracious. Thank you so, so much. To be with and you today. Thank you for taking the time. You know, November 11th is Veterans Day, and so I can't think of a better time to talk about the work your foundation is doing. So for listeners and veterans who are tuning in today, tell us a little bit about that foundation and and what prompted you to get it started. Well, you know, um, Bob, my husband, Bob, uh, had an extended period of time at Walter Reed Army Medical Center back about three years ago. Um, He was hospitalized for almost 11 months, and uh, I became a caregiver. I was there just about every day, and uh, I would uh, visit with wounded warriors and with their caregivers, uh, a spouse or mother or dad or sibling who would be with them. And, you know, it was incredible to me to learn what they were going through. I remember a a young woman lying on a pallet by her husband's bed, a father kind of wrapped up in a a blanket in a chair, uh, watching over his paralyzed son. And there was uh, Mrs. Stewart from Mississippi, C.J. Stewart's mother. And uh, C.J.'s dad was uh, at work in Mississippi. Uh, They traded uh, time with him in the hospital. But when he was down in Mississippi, he would send daily scripture to inspire his son, and it was pasted on all over the walls of that little hospital room. I'll never forget it. He had had 40 separate surgeries, CJ. And uh, his his uh, mother came with a number of others as I began to take families downtown to Washington for dinner just to get them out of the hospital room, give mm-hmm. them a chance to talk. Um, and uh, I learned so much about what they were dealing with, multiple uh, health care systems uh, with different structures because the soldiers were returning with with uh, wounds and injuries that were, were uh, varying. You know, it might be uh, physical problems, the need for amputations up at Walter Reed, or it might be uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, or severe depression, or TBI, the traumatic brain injury. Um, and so they were trying to... Tra- 
these health care systems determine what benefits their uh, their uh, soldier had um, and dealing with family issues like legal problems and financial problems many of them very young spouses who really didn't have much knowledge about those areas um, and so after Bob came home from the hospital for his birthday we invited the families at Walter Reed to our apartment which is not all that large but we put a, a tent over the patio and we had four bus loads of, of folks come and about eight of the uh, uh, soldiers came in their wheelchairs as well with their wives pushing them and their children coming along and so more and more I got to know the details of what they were dealing with uh, and you know trying to prevent uh, uh, triggers that could cause an episode with PTSD that could last not just a short time but even for days um, and trying to provide for medical uh, coordination of their medicines and so on when they when they uh, left for home. Well, now you make a good point that so many of these caregivers are unintended caregivers. That's They're right, exactly. people that are their family, their parents, their spouses, exactly. uh, their That's brothers right. and sisters, and, and they encounter two areas that they really have no training uh, in. Right. One is administrative, but the other is medical. I mean, well, you, if you don't have a medical well, background, it's a bit daunting to think that you're going to care for this person potentially for the rest of their life and you don't know anything about the injury. That's right, and this can be for decades, just like you say, and it's totally unexpected. Uh, and, uh, you know, many of them have given up their jobs. Uh, they've given up uh, their uh, plans to go for further education. Uh, Melissa Johnson, who is a foundation fellow of my foundation, um, her husband was uh, legally blinded by a, uh, a mortar blast in, uh, in Iraq and also suffers from PTSD and TBI. She was a school teacher for 15 years and when when she couldn't be away from him she'd come home and find him in a little ball rolled up uh, didn't know whether he had even eaten food that day mm-hmm. she just gave up her her career and said I'm a full-time caregiver um, and uh, and they do it uh, willingly they do it with great love um, and it's an incredible thing to see but you've uh, made the point that there's really some there's focus on the medical benefits to veterans, but there's really hasn't been any infrastructure to help these unintended caregivers. Right, yes. We're focused on the caregiver of the military and uh, veteran uh, who, uh, who's, you know, as you say, the spouse or the mother or the father, but more often than not, it's the spouse, is providing this full-time care. And so it seemed to me the important thing was first to get the evidence-based research. Uh, who is this population and what are their needs because we've never had and this is hard to believe but it's the fact we've never had comprehensive evidence-based or empirical uh, data uh, to support what their needs are so uh, my foundation commissioned the RAND Corporation to undertake this research and to to look at what the needs are uh, also what is out there an environmental scan and whether uh, it's effective or not uh, a gap analysis analysis, look at what the gaps are, and then give us recommendations as to what needs to be done across uh, sectors such as the government, the private sector, as well as the nonprofits, because only uh, only a major uh, national response can solve this societal crisis. This and now I want to point out that the reason that you selected the uh, uh, RAN to do this study was that they are also the same group that did the 2000 an eight landmark study uh, that really uh, revealed the situation that our returning veterans were encountering in terms of the number of injuries, how long those injuries were taking to recover from, and so on and so forth. Yes. In fact, they have great expertise in this area, and uh, the study was called The Invisible Wounds of War, and it literally yes. put TBI and PTSD on the policy table. The person who headed that study of, with 35 researchers is the head of my my research as well. Which is great because they can bring that information into looking at what the caregivers are going through. Now we have to take our first commercial break and when we come back we're going to talk about that, the long-term care for conditions such as PTSD. You're listening to the Costa Report.
If you listen to the news today, you might come away with the impression that our biggest challenges are political and economic. But if this were true, then countries which have different political and economic systems would be facing different problems. But they aren't. Every government and every nation is struggling with job creation, debt, immigration, climate change, terrorism, health care, energy, and wild swings in financial markets. So something else must be going on. That's why I'm inviting you to get a copy of The Watchman's Rattle, a book which shows how the Roman, Mayan, and Khmer empires once faced similar challenges and what we can do to avoid their fate. Visit RebeccaCosta.com today and get a copy of The Watchman's Rattle, because once you do, you'll never look at the world the same way. Did you know that every day we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data and that 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years alone? This data comes from everywhere and it affects everyone. This data is big data. Big data is all data and it's more than simply a matter of size. Big data represents an opportunity to uncover new insights, make your business more agile and answer questions that were previously beyond your reach. IBM's big data platform uses sophisticated technologies and patented advanced analytics designed to complement your existing information infrastructure. The IBM big data platform allows you to get started quickly today and expand to address more complex problems tomorrow. It doesn't matter where you start, it matters that you start. Find out how IBM can help you turn big data into a competitive advantage by visiting ibm.com slash big data today. Okay, it's holiday time. Aren't you excited about getting your gift list together and commencing all that wonderful holiday shopping? Yeah, right. But seriously now, listen to me. I have the perfect suggestion for you to mitigate your holiday stress and pressure. Get a beautifully, personally inscribed, hardbound K's commentary book for all on your gift list. What a concept. Nearly everyone would just love to receive such a gift. The only people who would not be thrilled to receive what is sure to become a treasured collector's item are the politically correct, illogical activists, sneaky weasels, slimy politicians, and others whom Kay exposes in her inimitable, very direct manner. But you can have some fun by giving Kay's book to those people anyway. Now listen up, here's the deal. One book is $15, but if you're willing to buy a case of 28 books for $300, you can get the price per book down to $10 80 cents. Actually, a little less than that. Kay is normally here at the station Saturdays during Saturday special time, 10 a.m. to 12 noon Saturday morning, to sign books and greet listeners, but can be available by appointment at other times. What a great way to support your favorite radio station, give unique gifts to your favorite people, and solve most, if not all, of your holiday shopping hassles. Kay's holiday book promo is available now at KSEO Studios and maybe at Costco or some other location very soon. Ask your favorite retailer. Tune in to the Sentinel Radio Program Saturday morning at 8 a.m. right here on AM 1080 KSCO. Brought to you by First Church of Christ Scientist Monterey. Come into our Christian Science Community Reading Room and Bookstore and find comfort from the challenges you're facing. We have the resources that will connect you with your God-given substance. Find help now. Our address is 780 Abrego Street in Monterey. Reach out for this help today. Come in and visit or call 831-372-5076. 372 Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is former Secretary of Transportation and Labor and President of the American Red Cross and Senator Miss Elizabeth Dole. And before the break, we were talking about the situation that many families find themselves in when they're suddenly thrown into the role of being a caretaker to a veteran. And you were describing a formal study which your foundation has commissioned the RAND Group uh, to perform, which involves research and uh, collecting empirical 
statistical data on what kinds of support these caregivers would benefit from. Uh, so let, let's take a moment to talk about uh, uh, the other study that the RAND group did, which brought uh, the illness of post-traumatic stress disorder to the public's attention. Uh, this is a condition which is often difficult for veterans and their families to come to terms with, and also one that can require long-term care. Um, first of all, what, what can you tell veterans or their families who might suspect that something is wrong, but they're just trying to tough it out? I would say, uh, please, please uh, get some help because uh, I think more and more people are willing now to uh, to to talk with a, uh, a doctor, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, um, and to to really be able to uh, benefit from therapy. Um, and that's so important uh, to take advantage of what uh, is available there. Um, and you know, for for a person who is really um, uh, dealing with PTSD. Uh, uh, often they're not able to leave the home, um, uh, not able to, to function in a normal way. And it's it's just so important to be able to get that assistance and hopefully to, to see that situation uh, improve somewhat. Um, and our partners at, uh, at RAND Corporation tell us there are about 725,000 who have returned home uh, to their families with this condition, uh, about 60,000 with, uh, with physical injuries. Uh, but uh, PTSD, about um, it's more like seven hundred twenty-five thousand. And how many are getting treatment of those? Uh, I don't have that number. Mm-hmm. Rebecca, I'm mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I'm going to guess uh, a small percentage. And and the reason yeah. I'm going to say that is, uh, as you know, I'm from a military family, and one of the cultural things in the military is that you just you you tough these things out. Yes, and I would agree with you. I'm sure that it is uh, a small number, but I, I don't have the exact uh, number. But um, what what Rand is doing, um, and uh, it's the Elizabeth Dole Foundation Rand study. Uh, the veterans uh, have been surveyed from past wars mm-hmm. prior to September 11, 2001, and the idea is to to gain an understanding from them and to get uh, real data on the issues that they're facing from a long term health care standpoint. In other words, what what is it going to be like 5, 10, 15 years out? Um, this is critical, I think, that while uh, we want to welcome our our, uh, our troops back uh, with all our hearts and and, uh, and thank them uh, so, so deeply for their, uh, their service to our country and their sacrifices, we also need to think about the long-term aspect. We need to take the, the long view. And this is, you know, we're, we've been fighting longer than ever in the history of our country. This is the longest period of war. Um, And uh, less than 1% of our population is fighting for our freedom and our security. And so one of the difficulties here is that the caregivers we've talked about are really hidden heroes. People do not know what they're dealing with. We're so separated from the military situation today. Um, It's not like uh, earlier times, you know, World War II, everybody was involved. But here, um, it's it's, it's really a, a separation that makes makes it hard to know what they're dealing with. And a lot so. of these families feel isolated. They, right. you know, I, let's take PTSD as an example. What kind of support is available to the caregiver? Well, you know, the caregiver, uh, and this is where RAND Corporation is going to give us uh, a lot of valuable information Mm -hmm. about what is out there. Um, There are some programs, certainly, but they're scattered. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, nothing short of uh, a a real national response or national strategy is going to uh, resolve this societal crisis. It's going to have to be uh, what's always been affected for me in government service, if you have a major breakthrough, is to leverage resources, provide innovation, uh, collaborate, uh, encourage people to work together and to bring down those silos That's <laughs> so, right. that, so that we can have a much more effective uh, end result and powerful uh, resolution of the problem. Well, and certainly, if we find out here. something's working, we want to repopulate that. Let's find, you know, let's find that local program that's working 
working yeah. perfectly to support the caregiver, support the veteran, and then let's leverage the heck out of that. Uh, but bet. if we don't know where it is or how it's working, uh, we can't really offer that to right. people. Well, now, so. Rand, Rand uh, back, we, cr- we created uh, Military and Veteran Caregivers uh, Week back in early March, and Rand provided phase one of their research and listed all of the, the uh, challenges that the caregiver has and also how it's impacted them physically and mentally, uh, that the caregiver, uh, the caregiving is not an easy thing. And when you're doing it um, often as the only person who is trusted and knowledgeable and available, and you're doing it Mm -hmm. 24-7, you know, this is labor intensive. Uh, And so uh, as as we move forward to try to learn more from RAND, uh, I think that their recommendations are going to be very important in terms of how we uh, next uh, early next spring, March, we will will have the rollout of the full RAND report. And uh, it'll be critical in taking the long view uh, and certainly uh, as far as embracing those returning military members and their families as they come home and try to transition, the transitioning from this intensive uh, uh, fighting and, and the fact that there have been so many redeployments to transition back home. Yeah, is, well, is that's another, a, is another that, issue. I, I commend you for, uh, for commissioning this study because I think it's going to reveal a, a lot that has been swept under the rug. Well, you know, um, Rebecca, it's amazing to me that we didn't have this kind of research um, and that it, it, until you have a firm foundation uh, that's empirically based, right. uh, only then can you begin to effectively uh, find solutions. And that's, that's right. But but like everything else, it starts with sort of a hunch that you sort of know the problem is out there. Mm-hmm. You just haven't quantified it uh, and you don't have the language for how big it is uh, or exactly what the uh, yeah. actionable item should be. I think what this is going to do is it's going to really uh, uh, put some uh, specifics into play, and they're going to be hard to ignore. I think this is going to be, I, I'm just going to anticipate, this will be a pretty sobering study when we when it all comes to pass. Well, now, you know what? I found that, that, that organizations are yearning for this data. Yes. Nonprofits that are trying to be responsive and are being responsive in specific ways, like, for, for example, example, um, having, uh, you know, taking the family for a week of respite uh, uh, on uh, a retreat of some sort. I mean, there are many things that are going on, but um, they, they desperately want this information. Um, and uh, so so do the private sector groups and the government. So I think it's going to be uh, very important. And then what we'll do, we're building a coalition. And I would like to, to urge those who are listening, you know, the main thing is we've got to decide eliminate the results of the RAND uh, study, what the what the solutions are, the recommendations, uh, and we're building a huge coalition of organizations and individuals right now, and I'll be doing a lot of that uh, between now and March when the RAND Well, we have to take out. a scheduled break right now, but when we come back, let's talk a little bit about that coalition and talk Wonderful. about the funding for the support. You're listening Good. to the Costa Report. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amy Tobin, cookbook author and culinary expert. Are you looking for ideas to create a more balanced meal plan? As one of the world's largest providers of fresh fruits and vegetables, Dole makes it easy to eat the right foods. From a wide variety of salad blends and all-natural salad kits to fresh-cut vegetables and a rainbow of your favorite fresh fruit, Dole delivers good nutrition naturally. But Dole goes beyond just offering healthy fruits and vegetables. Dole has their own nutrition institute that gives you the knowledge and tools you need to make smart choices about your nutrition and health. Visit www.dole.com for more information about the Dole Nutrition Institute. Be sure to sign up for their e-newsletter to receive delicious recipes, tips, and articles to help you make your meals the best they can be. Visit www.dole.com for more. If you own property, you know how much hard work goes into keeping up with it. Kubota Compact Tractors can help you power through all kinds of spring chores. If you're thinking, I'd love to own a Kubota, but can I 
afford a Kubota? Think CNN Tractors in Watsonville. At CNN, Kubota quality pays for a lot less than you might think. For example, the feature-loaded L3200F starts at only $12,995 with a 31.9 horsepower Kubota diesel engine. Nothing wimpy under the hood. The L3200F also features a Category 1 three-point hitch, smooth shuttle transmission, and power steering. All standard and all with the durability and reliability that a Kubota is known for. Kubota Kubota's L3200F. Think about it. With so much power, versatility, and quality, you can't afford not to take a look. Check out Kubota at CNN Tractors in Watsonville. Give us your tough jobs. Here's an important message from MZ. As you know, we at KSCO KOMY have the most intelligent audience in all of radio. By design, because we do not allow stupid people to listen to either station. It is our goal to not only have the most intelligent audience in radio, but the healthiest audience as well. That is why we strongly promote 90 for Life Longevity Health products, the Healthy Body Start Pack, and Beyond Tangy Tangerine in particular. These products are available during business hours at KSCO Studios at 2300 Portola Drive, Santa Cruz, frequently in conjunction with valuable promotions such as Kay's Book, KSCO Hats, Tote Bags, and Bumper Stickers. Now, because we want to make it easier than ever for members of our audience to become and stay healthy, we are looking for 12 retail businesses within our KSCO coverage area to partner with us in our Optimal Health Quest promotion. If you own a business or know someone who owns a business and would like to participate in KSEO's Get Everyone Healthy program and thereby receive advertising incentives and start to build a powerful revenue stream, send an email to me, mz at kseo.com, with the words health promotion in the subject line. Tell me about your business, and I will personally get back to you ASAP. Hello, this is Donald Davidson, the host of the Perspectives Radio Show on Saturday at 12 noon. We have a variety of programs from constitutional rights and issues to controversial alternative health views. We interview well-known authors from many walks of life, attorneys from many fields, and internationally known health doctors. So to hear a different perspective, join me, Donald Davidson, special guests and regular guest hosts every Saturday at 12 noon for the Perspectives Radio Show right here on KSCO. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, my guest today is Elizabeth Dole. And uh, before we went to break, you were saying that you're forming a coalition to help disseminate the data from the upcoming RAND study, and then we had to take our commercial break. So uh, tell us about that coalition. Right. Uh, well, uh, as we've, uh, over the, the past uh, year, year and a half, uh, there are a number of uh, foundations and individuals who have given generously to the foundation to, to help us, uh, both uh, as as we were uh, establishing the foundation and then, of course, with the, the RAND uh, study. Uh, for example, the Star Foundation, uh, the Lilly Endowment is, uh, is involved with us, Google. Uh, we have three groups grants that are out right now, and Google is taking the results as the grants are completed and making the, the results available to hundreds of thousands of caregivers. Um, Blue Shield, and these are these are gaps that are significant that are, we don't have to wait for Rand to tell us, in other words. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so so those three grants, Google will uh, will certainly help us to, to uh, promote. Uh, Blue Shield of California Foundation, the Cannon Foundation in North Carolina, uh, the late Tom Clancy, as an individual supporter, was a wonderful author. Uh, he he uh, gave financially, but he was also a member of my advisory committee. Um, also, Mary Winnefield is on my advisory committee. She's the wife of Admiral Winnefield, who is vice chair of the Joint Chiefs. Um, and uh, I'm so proud to have Donna Shalala, the former secretary of HHS and um, president of the University of Miami. She's on the advisory committee as well as many others. Uh, Bob Dole, I have to tell you, was really kind of funny, Rebecca. He was cute. He said, 
Uh, I know a little something about veterans. And I said, Bob, would you like to be on my advisory committee? And he said, yes. Well, you <laughs> so two are an unbeatable team. On there. And he's been, he's been very supportive uh, financially. Uh, uh, I would say you have been equally supportive of Mr. Uh, Dole. Thank uh, you. The, thank the, you. you are an unbeatable team and uh, certainly a role model for oh, uh, for power couples that uh, are in the thick of things. Yeah, uh, um, but, You know. Another one is uh, Rich Trumka, yeah. president of the AFL-CIO, uh, Sheldon Adelson, Don Rumsfeld, um, uh, Ambassador Borden Gray. Uh, he was ambassador to the uh, EU. He's on the advisory committee. So, you know, we're building organizations, large and small, individuals, wealthy or just given small amounts. <laughs> we just welcome everyone to be a part so that when those recommendations come out, we can, uh, can make them available through uh, social media uh, sites, uh, in uh, discussions all across America. It's going to take us uh, all 50 states working together here That's to right. solve this problem. It but really I'll tell is. you, a big part of it that we keep learning about is raising small amounts over the Internet. You oh, know, crowdsourcing yeah. is really powerful. And also, mm-hmm. it gives the person at home an opportunity to participate. And I think when it comes to veterans, that's our patriotic duty for each of us to participate. We can't just leave this up to foundations and companies like Google. Each of us needs to pay our tribute to our veterans, and and this provides a a way to do that. Yes, and if you wouldn't mind my uh, mentioning my website, it's ElizabethDoleFoundation.org, and we have received some wonderful small contributions that we appreciate every bit as much. It's so exciting to open, (laughs) open an envelope or to to hear that what's happening on the web. Well, of course, uh, and we're we're headed into the holiday season, and that's a time when all of us can reflect and uh, and get generous. And yes, uh, and I'm going to ask you to give that uh, that website a, a couple of times here uh, before we end the show. I, okay. I do want to move on to a, a slightly different topic, and that is that the the whole country has been focused on this Affordable Health Care Act and and uh, the growing deficit in the in the country. Do, do you mind if I ask you, do, does the Affordable Health Care Act affect veterans and their families in any specific way? You know, I think uh, the uh, Veterans Administration website has very helpful information outlining how the ACA relates to veterans, um, and families should go to that site. Mm-hmm. But my great concern, and this this is the real key issue, mm-hmm. is the delay in receiving benefits earned through the VA. In other words, um, the, the, the wounded are they're in line with others trying to get their benefits. And this is absolutely unacceptable. Now, is that a budget uh, issue? Is it a bureaucracy I issue? I tell you, I, I, I'm not sure why it's taking so long to fix this. But uh, Secretary Shinseki is working hard to address this, to eliminate the problems. Um, I, he's had, I just read in the paper today, that they were doing uh, mandatory overtime shifts. Uh, they're trying to move to digital rather than paper files. I honestly think the, the, the main issue, and it's been going on for some time, is that th- th- it's been based on paper files, huge stacks on one individual, mm-hmm. you know, rather than being uh, uh, electronic. And um, he has said in the past he would have this under control by 2015. I'm not sure why it's taking so much time to resolve it, Rebecca. It's, it's, a, it's, it's sort of a mystery as to why this has been such a, a horrendous problem. But you know that those who sacrifice so much for our country um, and who uh, we're so proud to honor them in, in, in every way that we can, but here they are needing their benefits that they've earned um, and not readily getting them in every case. Uh, by, in and and I just want to add one thing. Because there's a lot, we've got 3 million people listening to us today, and here's what I want to say. If you have ever been in pain so much as a toothache, every minute goes so slowly. Exactly. Can you imagine asking someone who is uh, in, in deeply suffering to wait to 2015 to get their records digitized? This is, uh, something has to be done about that. I know. And, it's, uh, it, you know, Shinseki says that he is working this. He's, go, he's trying to use different ways to 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 uh, to 
speed it up, but that uh, he's using 2015 as when it'll absolutely be done. But he's going to try to to move faster than that. But it's been a problem for some time, and uh, you know everyone that I talk to just can't really say why in the world we're in this box other than the fact that it's been uh, it's not it's not been uh, electronic it's been based on paper files uh, I, I find it so interesting uh, you know I, not too long ago I spoke at the uh, National Retail Federation and we seem to have the state of the art technology when it comes to uh, doing surveillance on consumers what kind of drapes you like what kind of discount will make you buy things and and yet that technology just didn't seem Seem to move into caring for our veterans. It, we are we are so hopelessly behind. Facial recognition software, a simple thing, where you know the way we express pain and pleasure is through our faces. Yes. That, that's how we do it. And so there's advanced facial recognition software that can be used to to indicate when a someone who's in the hospital is beginning to experience pain so that we don't have health care workers walking up to someone and saying, on a scale of one to ten, uh, how much pain are you in? I don't, I don't know, two, nine? I, you know, th- these kinds of things can be resolved using technology, and yet we seem like we're very far behind. Right, and I think uh, where the caregiver is concerned, and again, we're talking about people who have uh, little, literally uh, little or no systemic support. Um, it, you know, Rand has said that while the wounded warrior's needs uh, have uh, produced significant inquiry, um, some national solutions, a great deal of private philanthropy, uh, the, the needs of the caregivers are large they remain largely overlooked. Um, And as far as the caregiver in terms of government support, it's in its infancy. Mm -hmm. The the National Caregiver Act was adopted by Congress in 2010, but unfortunately it covers only a small percentage of caregivers. That's right. A small percentage. People who are, uh, for example, having to to, uh, bathe, feed, and dress uh, the wounded warrior every day, mm-hmm. or who uh, have to take very special care uh, over a person who has. PTSD. But of course, that doesn't cover people that are caring for someone with uh, PTSD and and other uh, ailments. Well, actually, PTSD is covered if it's if, if they require protection for themselves or others. They have to be watched over. I understand. Um, now we have to take our last break, but stay right where you are. We'll be right back with Elizabeth Dole. You're listening to the Costa Report. I'm here today with Scott Caraccioli of Caraccioli Cellars. Now, there's a number of ways you can taste wines at the tasting room. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, we currently have nine different wines on our tasting menu, and we really want it to be an experience where you get to taste the wine that you want to taste. So if you want to taste Pinot, you can really focus your flight around that. If you wanted to focus on the bubbles, we have three different sparklings that will allow you to build your flight that way. Or if you came in and you just wanted to taste one wine, we would uh, have it set up for you to be able to do that as well. Now, what's a flight? A flight is basically a combination of small tastes of different wines. If you wanted to taste all of our different Chardonnays, you could taste the 2007 Chardonnay, the 2008, and the 2009, and we would line you up with an individual taste of each of them. Thank you for being with us again, Scott. Thank you, Rebecca. Fifty years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. But something you may not know is that Dr. King was represented by the world's foremost speaking agency, the American Program Bureau. The American Program Bureau has a courageous history of representing luminaries, entertainers, and motivators from all backgrounds. From Ronald Reagan, Richard Branson, and Mikhail Gorbachev to John Stewart, Michael Douglas, and Desmond Tutu. From A-list celebrities to best-selling authors, cutting-edge business leaders, and the greatest minds in academia, the American Program Bureau has speakers to fit every venue and every budget. When corporations, conferences, schools, and community organizations need an expert speaker, they turn Turn to the American Program Bureau to help them craft an event that will be remembered long afterwards. 
To inquire about a speaker for your next engagement, contact the American Program Bureau at 800-225-4575 or visit our website at apbspeakers.com. The American Program Bureau, making history one speech at a time. This is Sylvia Panetta of the Panetta Institute announcing the 2013 Jefferson Lincoln Awards. Special honorees, CBS News' Bob Schieffer, Democratic Senator Barbara Mikulski, and Republican Senator Saxby Chambliss will join us Saturday, November 9th. We honor these individuals who are focused on bipartisan politics and unbiased journalism on challenges with the economy, national security, and political divisiveness in Washington. Call 582-4200 for more information. Folks, Mike Olson here at Santa Cruz Electronics, where doing it yourself is going to a whole new level. Just witnessed cutting-edge technology CNC milling machine. John Bowers, what does this machine do? It whittles away material from whatever it is you're working with and uh, removes everything until you get to the shape of the part that you want. Just saw John mill out his own wrench from a chunk of material. He put a computer program in, turned the machine on. The machine said, yes, John, here's your wrench. This is a game changer technology. It certainly is. It actually allows no oh, you and I and other folks to uh, be able to do small-scale manufacturing uh, right out of their garage. Come down here to Santa Cruz Electronics on Soquel Avenue and get a demonstration learn how to do it. It's uh, great fun and can be rewarding, too. Come and look at it right here at Santa Cruz Electronics, 2808 Soquel Avenue. It's a CNC milling machine. Dream up a widget in the morning and have it done in the afternoon and put it on eBay at night. Just like that, right, John? You bet. Hi, Jacoby here, host of Raising the Standards, right here on KFCO, Saturdays, 3 to 5 p.m. Tune in and join me, Rachel, my co-host, our buddy Rick, and some of the most interesting folks in the world as we chat and play the best music on the planet. And remember, if at some point during the program you're not offended, well, you're just not listening. Raising the Standards, Saturdays, here on KSEO, 3 to 5. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is Elizabeth Dole. Uh, so, Ms. Dole, we, we hear stories of military service personnel now on their second, third, and fourth tours of duty in a row, uh, and, and that would seem to make the transition back to a non-war environment even more challenging. No question about it, Rebecca. Uh, when there's been this intensive situation, uh, you know, uh, urban fighting in many cases where, uh, uh, you know, you're just you almost have to be just uh, on guard uh, constantly, mm-hmm. um, and then repeat deployments, um, often with little time in between. Um, and you know, back in in the day when my husband was uh, was uh, fighting for our country, um, the troops would return home. Home, not in his case because he was completely paralyzed at the time he returned to the United States and we thank God that uh, if he was able to improve so much over the next four years of hospitalization but as as the troops would come back uh, who were who were not wounded um, they they had weeks together uh, to process the the uh, traumas that they had experienced um, they they were together as a unit you know uh, coming back uh, by ship. Now it's it's as if a uh, a soldier is just flown from the battlefield almost directly to you know uh, to his home, and the transition is so extreme for both the uh, the uh, returning military member as well as for the family. Um, and I think that 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 is is really a huge issue uh, in terms of how you adjust uh, without having that time to kind of process and to be with your buddies uh, over some weeks when you can sort of work through it, you know, through the, the trauma that you've experienced. That's right. Uh, so it's a it's another issue uh, to think about, and um, I I would I just hope that all those who are listening today would would really think about these troops as they're coming home. Um, we know that the research shows that a strong, well supported caregiver makes the biggest impact on the the health and the recovery and the well being of our veterans and wounded warriors. But as we try to galvanize individuals and organizations and communities, really looking to the uh, the RAND, role, RAND Corporation rollout. Um, it would be so great to start talking about this issue. 
you in your churches and rotary clubs and organizations and and just helping people to to understand because i found in every case almost People want to help. They they support our military. They just don't know what's happening. So well, if, also if leave your listen. Email. Let's be honest. We don't know what to do. Right. 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 The American people. When you tell them what to do, if you say these things will be helpful and you're specific about it, we always rise to the occasion. That's right. But you can't you can't ask the person on the street. Hey, I want you to help support somebody who's got PTSD. I wouldn't know where to start. Right. And and I so this is imagine a caregiver suddenly uh, saddled with this responsibility and uh, hasn't been educated or trained in it. Uh, you know, it, it is it is I have to believe it has got to be one of the most overwhelming experiences. That's exactly my view. Exactly my view. And, uh, you know, if uh, just to mention that email again, is, uh, is, or that website, uh, rather, um, since you told me it's all right for me to do that. Uh, do it as many it, times as you like. <laughs> Thank you. Because we would like people to leave their email at elizabethdolefoundation.org. Let us welcome you to the coalition and share stories with you that you can pass on to your social web uh, uh, social media uh, sites, you know, to, to let people know what's happening to these families. Um, we can we can provide those. We can uh, show you what we're doing to try to galvanize and sort of include you in the family. Now, and, we're going to have this information up on our website and also good. on our social media sites, and our, our social media folks have us all over the place. So Great. we're going to make sure we get this website out there. And for people and, who didn't have a pen handy, you can go straight to my website and we will Thank get you. you in touch with the I foundation. I really appreciate that. And if they encounter, if they find that there is, as they talk to Rotary Clubs and, you know, Kiwanis and, and at church and friends and family, if they find there is a family, because 50% of those fighting for us are National Guard and Reserve. They're scattered all over America. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you find there's a family in the community, offer your support. Even something as simple as, you know, saying, may I watch the children for a while? Could I pick up groceries for you? Could I mow your lawn? Mm-hmm. I mean, anything uh, that could just show your support and your your appreciation and, and your love and, and your uh, your support, your moral support, too. <laughs> a- absolutely. You know, my mom was a big fan of putting anonymous thank you notes in people's mailboxes. Oh, I love it. That's she used to do idea. it. She, 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 she didn't have much. You know, I didn't come from a wealthy family, but she, she said, we've always got pen and paper and you can, and you can always take time to say thank you to somebody and oh, people kept lovely. those notes for a long time and uh, and they meant a lot to people now recently uh, and, and before you go I have to tell mm-hmm. people this because not every it was a big deal on the east coast but not a lot on the west coast know about this you and your husband uh, you spent some time with some world war ii veterans from san diego is that right Oh, my goodness. You know, thank you for, yes, indeed. And we've, this has been something that Bob and I have been doing for several years. Uh, and tomorrow morning, we'll be at the World War II Memorial. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably the last day before the weather turns too cold for World War II veterans to come in. But uh, it's it's the best day of the week because you have a chance to thank them for what they've done. I mean, these, these are the people who saved our country for freedom and for democracy, you know, uh, at a time when things could have been so different. Um, and just to be able to, to hug them, and I'm a hugger, Rebecca. So. Yes, I saw lots of pictures of you hugging them, and they and the veterans looked very happy, Miss Dole. <laughs> oh, but it, it's a wonderful uh, thing in terms of its meaning to us. You know, it means more to us than to them. And and that Bob is doing well. He's, he's uh, celebrated his 90th birthday recently, and he's had his his medical highs and lows, but uh, he's going to be right there tomorrow morning um, to to meet that last group coming in. And it was a it was a joy to see the folks from San Diego. They were great. <laughs> Absolutely, there were a lot of pictures posted up on the website, and I think uh, many of the veterans were just shocked and absolutely thrilled to be greeted by you and Mr. Dole. 
Uh, Unfortunately, we are uh, almost out of time. I'm going to ask you to give that website one more time for veterans that are and their families that are listening today. Right. It's ElizabethDoleFoundation.org. Okay, and that is our program for today. But before we say goodbye, I do want to take this opportunity to thank you for your service to our country. Thank you, oh, Ms. Dole. Bless you. Thank you very much. God bless. <laughs> Bye now. Bye-bye. If your station is leaving us after this hour and you have a question or a comment to make about today's program, you can email me at RebeccaCosta.com or send me a note on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. uh, And let me know what you thought about our conversation with Elizabeth Dole today. And if you missed the full interview with Dole or any of our other guests, you can download previous episodes of the Costa Report from our website, Apple iTunes, Podbean, and our new YouTube channel. Uh, And if you do know a vet, or you know the family of a veteran and you didn't have a pencil handy during the interview, please reach out to us and we'll put you in touch with the right agency, the right person, the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. Um, It's important. It's important. We're moving into the holidays and the holidays can either be a generous and joyous time or they can be dark. And, uh, and it's, it's up to each of us to make sure that there is not a veteran that eats alone, feels alone, or feels isolated. So I hope you will take a moment to contact us and let us help you get in touch with groups uh, or maybe even families that could use some support uh, during this time. I also want to take a moment to thank listeners who put the Watchman's Rattle on their Christmas list this year. Uh, this is the only book that spells out the three earliest signs to watch for uh, prior to unilateral collapse, and and I I want you to know what they are so that you can do something about it. So go to RebeccaCosta.com right now. Put your book order in. Uh, Do it while it's fresh on your mind. Uh, This this is uh, one book that will change the way you see our problems in Washington, D.C. and around the world. Uh, So take a moment. uh, Go to RebeccaCosta.com and order your copy right now. Uh, My guest next week is former NSA official William Scott. You are not going to want to miss this program. He's going to be joining us to talk about a threat that you're not going to hear anyone in the mainstream media talking about. Terrorist groups attacking our country by setting fire to wildlands and national forests. Uh, You don't want to miss this eye-opening conversation with William Scott about uh, dangerous arson attacks. Uh, on our soil next week right here on the only weekly news program that puts policy ahead of politics. I want to take a moment to thank Miss Elizabeth Dole again for taking time to join us. Um, and, uh, and I hope that you'll all go out and celebrate veterans this Veterans Day. Now stay tuned for another hour of Straight Talk Radio following these important messages. You're listening to the Costa Report. Did you know that every day we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data and that 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years alone? This data comes from everywhere and it affects everyone. This data is big data. Big data is all data and it's more than simply a matter of size. Big data represents an opportunity to uncover new insights, make your business more agile and answer questions that were previously beyond your reach. IBM's big data platform uses sophisticated technologies and patented advanced analytics designed to complement your existing information infrastructure. The IBM big data platform allows you to get started quickly today and expand to address more complex problems tomorrow. It doesn't matter where you start, it matters that you start. Find out how IBM can help you turn big data into a competitive advantage by visiting ibm.com slash big data today. You, there's only one, and we exist because of you. To provide the care you need when you need it, Physicians Medical Group has over 300 providers just in Santa Cruz County. That's over 300 teammates focused on the one, the only, you. With over 42 specialties and 100 locations, you'll find the right provider for you. Find your teammate, your Physicians Medical Group care provider, by visiting our website, pmgscc.com. This Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. on It's the Way of Love Live. 
we celebrate the world's oceans with Save Our Shores and the music of Amanda West and Day and Kai. And we go beneath the waves with the Beneath the Waves Film Festival. This Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m., it's The Way of Love Live on KSCO. Serving Northern California for over 65 years, this is KSCO Santa Cruz. 